Let's make the most of that TI Inspire calculator so that you can do great on the math portion of the SAT. Let's start by solving an equation like this one. Now I'm going to show you two different ways. We do want to be in the calculate scratch pad. So I've got A chosen. I can just hit enter from here. To solve this, I want to use the algebra tools of the calculator. So I'm going to go to my menu. I want to choose algebra, which is number three. You can arrow down and hit enter, or you can just type number three. So enter. And I want that numerical solve. Let's hit enter again. I need to put this equation into the parentheses. Starting with the little negative next to the enter key, I'm going to do negative four, grabbing the variable from the bottom of the calculator, x. And then I want squared next to number four. And then I've got minus, so minus seven x down on the bottom. And then equals is right there below control. So I've got equals. And then again, that little negative next to the enter, negative 36. But I need to tell the calculator what variable I'm solving for. So I need to put a comma in, which is down here below the pi symbol. So comma and then my variable x. Let's go ahead and hit enter. And it says that my solution is 2.25, which is great, but I don't have a decimal answer in my choices. So let's convert this to a fraction. To do that, we go right back to menu. So right back to menu. This time we wanna change that number answer. So we're gonna arrow down to number two and then enter. And we wanna approximate this to a fraction. So enter for number two and then enter again. And we end up with the solution of nine fourths. Now I wanna show you how to do this one more way because the second method is really great and it will give you multiple solutions. In this case, we just wanted the positive. The second way is also an algebra tool. So we wanna go back into that menu. Let's go to algebra, which is number three. I'm gonna arrow down, but you could type number three. I want algebra and then enter. We're gonna choose polynomial tools this time. So three and then enter. We wanna find roots of a polynomial. Roots are the same thing as solutions. So let's choose this. And then it asks me for the degree of my polynomial. The degree of that polynomial is degree two. I could arrow up and down through those degree choices, but I do want degree two. I'm gonna tab down to my real solutions and then go to okay and hit enter. Now it gives me this form of the equation, which is not what I have. So instead I need to move that negative 36 over as a positive 36. Now it's prompting me just for those coefficients. So a2 is the coefficient on the squared term. That's gonna be a negative four, and then we'll hit tab. Now a1 is the coefficient on the x term. So that's gonna be a negative seven and then tab. A sub zero is my constant term. Having moved that over, it is a 36. Let's go ahead and tab down to okay, hit enter, and then enter again. There are my two solutions, and I think it was even quicker. Next, we wanna solve a system of equations, and we're also gonna be able to type this one right in using our algebra tools. So let's go to menu, and then we went algebra, which is number three. And we wanna solve a system of linear equations. So number two, it asks me for the number of equations. I do happen to have two, but you could change that one. And I do have variables X and Y, and then we're gonna hit okay, so enter. And it is asking me for those two equations. So let's go ahead and just type these in. The first equation in that first box. So it's gonna be a five Y. So I've got five Y variable there at the bottom. And then I want equals underneath control Control, and I've got 10x, so 10 variable x plus 11. I'm gonna tab down to the second box. This is for my second equation. This one's a negative five y, so negative five, and then my variable y. I again need equals underneath control, so equals, and then I've got five x, so five x minus 21, minus 21. It's already inserted the variables X and Y, so I'm ready just to hit enter now, and I've got my two solutions there of 2 fifths and 53 fifteenths. Now it says, what is the value of 30 X? So to get the value of 30 X, I'm gonna go 30 times my X value, which is two divided by three, and then enter, and we've got our answer of 20. 
Next, we've got a function that we need to evaluate. Now, I think the easiest way to do this is to assign h of x to the expression x squared minus 3. So let's do that. So I'm going to type the letter h and then parentheses variable x and then close parentheses. And then I'm going to use the assign tool instead of the equals here. That assign tool is right next to number nine. To access that, I need control to get that colon equals. And I'm going to assign it to be an x squared minus three. So variable x squared minus three and then enter. So now it's been assigned, all I've got to do is to evaluate it for each of the x values in my answers, which are a one, a two, and a three. So here we go. We're gonna go h parentheses one, enter, and then we'll do h parentheses two, enter, and then finally we've got h parentheses three, enter, and negative two, one, six is what I'm looking for, and that answer is gonna be b. Now let's do some statistics. We're gonna find the median in this question. Now I could absolutely go to a spreadsheet and type this in, but I think it's actually a little more time consuming than it's worth. Let's go ahead and just find the median of this list. Once you know how to do it, it's pretty straightforward. We again wanna to go to the menu here in my scratch pad, but now I'm looking for some statistic function. So we're gonna to go to menu. I want statistics, which is number six, and then enter. And we wanna do some list math. So arrowing down to number three, enter. I am looking for, there's my median there, number four. So you can type four or arrow down and enter. I want the median of a list. So I've got to put my list in curly brackets. Those curly brackets live on the closed parentheses right next to the number zero. So I'm going to do control and then curly brackets. And I'm going to type in each of these numbers followed by a comma. So I've got four, 10, 18, four. Once I've got them all in there, all I've got to do is to hit enter and my median is five. Here's a second different example of a statistics question on the SAT. In this question, we're given an initial data set, a number of eggs, and then they're going to add a sixth nest with 121 eggs to create a new data set. So we're looking at two data sets. We're going to compare the means of the two. Okay, so I need the mean of the original data set, and I need the mean of this data set with 121 added in. What we just did is actually a really easy thing to do, but with the mean instead. So we're going to use a list, and we are going to start with the mean. So we're going to go to menu. We want statistics, which I'm just going to hit number six here. We want list math. I'm just going to hit number three. And this time we want the mean, which is number three. Now I want the mean of a list. So I'm going to do control brackets, and then let's go ahead and type these in. Once you've got your last number in there, you can just hit enter, but it gives this to me instead as a fraction. I really want a decimal. Notice that approximate symbol on the enter key. Let's just do control enter to get this into a decimal form. Now it's really easy to find the mean of the second set. I'm gonna start with the first. Let's arrow up until we get to that first mean. I'm gonna hit enter to choose it. And I just wanna add one additional data value. So next to the 139, I just arrowed back. So I'm right next to the 139. I'm gonna put a comma here followed by my additional data value of 121. And then I hit enter again. I want control enter, I could have done that to begin with, and I get 139.5. So that original data set was higher than the new data set, which means our answer there is A. In this next example, it's asking us to find a minimum of a function. You might also see one that asks for a maximum and you're gonna solve it in exactly the same way. We're gonna do this by using the graph. And you'll notice up here by Scratchpad, I've got the calculator Scratchpad opened right now. We wanna go over to the graph Scratchpad. And to do that, we're gonna click the button here that has that calculator on it. So let's just click that. 
Right now, I'm not seeing my expression. And to get that expression in there or that function in there, I'm going to hit tab. So you can hit tab to either show it or to hide it. So let's hit tab again. I'm ready to type this function in. So let me go ahead and type it in. And then we'll hit enter to graph it. Now I can't really see it, so we need to do a zoom here. And I'm gonna do a zoom fit because that is the quickest way to get to your function and it almost always works. So to get there, we're gonna to go to the menu and then we wanna change the window zoom. So we're gonna go down there to number four and then enter. And we want a zoom fit, which is letter A. So going down to letter A and then enter, we have a pretty good view of what that looks like. Now let's do the minimum. So back to menu, we want to analyze this graph, which is number six. So I'm gonna hit number six and we want a minimum. Maximum is right there as well. So I want a minimum, um, arrowing down to minimum and then enter. It's asking me for the lower bound, which is really gonna be the bound on the left-hand side. So let's go ahead and move this until we are on the left-hand side. You could either use your left arrow. I happen to have a mouse, so I'm using my mouse to do that. I'm gonna click when I've got it where I want. You would click here in the middle. And then I want the upper bound. So the upper bound, I am arrowing over here to the right. So I've got that minimum there in between the shaded area. Now I've got my mouse so I can click or you could click this. Now I've got my value, it's really hard to see it. I'm gonna grab it and move it up here out of the way. They were asking me for a minimum X value. That minimum X value is negative 1.5, which is going to be negative three over two. Knowing how to use your TI Inspire is gonna really help your score, but knowing Desmos will too, I've got that video for you here.